Welcome to Mapcro, the RPG art show. My name is Kyle, and today we are building better treants. Treants. Ents. We're building better ants. In the background, you can see me working on an acrylic painting uh, on a piece of pre-gessoed canvas. I've never felt very encouraged by my results with uh, acrylic painting in the past, and it's been years and years, uh, perhaps even decades since the last time I really did um, an acrylic painting at all. But I had been following the video guides by Jeff Miracola, who is a fantasy illustrator who oftentimes works in acrylics, um, uh, drawing, you know, things like Magic the Gathering cards and several recently very successful Kickstarters as well. I'm going to have a link to Jeff's uh, YouTube channel and Gumroad page in the description below. Please check that out. They are really helpful and wonderful. In the future, when I feel more comfortable with my acrylic painting, I'll kind of go over the process in more detail. But until then, um, just know that if you buy some slightly nicer paints and slightly nicer brushes, you get a slightly nicer painting experience. Um, I am using golden fluid acrylics and oftentimes using uh, just some water to kind of create a wash or a glaze or make sure that the paint is flowing. So that's about all I'm gonna really say about this. Uh, whatever else, if you have questions in more detail, they're probably better addressed by watching Jeff's videos and then watching me do them poorly and explain them even worse. On to the subject at hand, Ents are a, basically a fantasy staple. You know that you are in fantasy land when you start seeing trees walk around and have opinions about things. I think you are in for a really good time if you have a GM who is just really going to tree beard up your encounter with this walking tree guy. Uh, I think they make for beautiful uh, social encounters in role-playing games because they can have this completely different point of view and they can be like, you know, thousands and thousands of years old, but still not really understand like basic politics from like a mile down the road. But when it comes to combat encounters, they, they kind of fall a little flat. Again, this is a bunch of stuff that works great in film and video games, but in a tabletop RPG, they're, they just kind of clobber people. They don't really have that much to do. Now, 5e kind of sets up a tree ant for success, seemingly, uh, because it has the ability to do double damage to objects and structures, so it can just, like, you know, really wreck shop and kind of make a really interesting high-action set piece of, like, it tearing apart a castle wall or something like that. And it can also, like, animate a tree, which is uh, really, really cool, uh, except those all those trees do are slam attacks. They That's all they do. Now, this ability to do double damage to structures and objects is clearly inspired by Lord of the Rings, where Treebeard marches with the rest of the Ents upon Isengard. It's one of the best parts of the movie and one of the best parts of the book, in my opinion, with one of my favorite songs. We come, we come with a roll of drum to run, to run, to run, to run. We come, we come with horn and drum to ruin, a ruin, a ruin, a rum. For bowl and bow are burning now. The furnace roars. We go to war. To Isengard with doom we come. With doom we come. With doom we come. This idea of an army of trees just like marching up on a castle and tearing it to shreds, and then that great scene in the movie, Release the River! It's just, it's so good. It's almost like if you meet a treant in its natural habitat, like out in the forest, you're missing the absolute coolest part of the monster. I mean, 
you know, the coolest part of the combat encounter. I would go so far as to suggest that if a combat counter with a treant is what you want in your game, you really ought to have it when the treants are just tired of the humans and they storm into town and just start wrecking stuff. Now that is a great opening for a game. But of course, now we're back to square one. Um, we have this, uh, you know, army of walking trees that are pissed off at everybody and they're wrecking stuff, but all they can do is just kind of use a slam attack, so we need to give them something else to do, something that's just not multiplying the slam attacks. I would just start thinking about this deep, creepy forest that, you know, no one comes out alive from. What are the other creatures that would be in perfect synchronicity with the tree ants? What would, who would help the tree ants? Or who would be brought along as kind of, you know, extra muscle? Then we have an encounter. My first instinct is to say bees or wasps, but we already kind of did this whole, like, thing with the bees in the owlbear video, so we need to branch out a little bit more. <laughs> branch out. It's just a little tree over there. <laughs> Sorry, I guess it's just low-hanging fruit. <laughs> Spiders. You should pack the treant full of spiders. Like so many spiders, every time you do damage to the treant, more spiders come out. Just lots of spiders. The spiders can, you know, work together to web up all of the, the heroes. Um, so that makes the slam attacks from the treant more effective. And I would also extend this ability to awaken trees to anything that's made of wood. Like, how crazy would that be if, you know, some farmer comes out with his pitchfork and suddenly that pitchfork kind of sprouts arms and legs and starts chasing the farmer around? Like, that idea that the things that we regard as raw resources uh, can turn on us at any moment is central to the metaphor that Ents and Tree Ents really are pointing at. It's like what Treebeard says. Hide. I am on nobody's side, because nobody is on my side. Now, it's probably about this point in the video that you realize that the image that I'm painting bears very little resemblance to the monster I have been describing. That's because I think about these videos and what I'm going to say them while I am working on them, and, uh, you know, this painting took a while, and my opinions about what an ant or a tree ant should really look like, but still have that classic Kyle twist on it, um, it really changed quite a bit. And I feel like I went a bit far afield with this image, even though I really like how it turned out. So I was going to just make this video about a graphite image with a slightly updated version that, you know, really leaned hard into the spider thing and it was going to have like a big, a giant club and a giant whip arm and everything. And I was like, no, again, this, this looks like a completely different creature. This is too far out of the realm of Ent and Tree Ent. So um, I decided to go with this thing. This thing here, uh, this kind of gets everything that I had been thinking about while drawing these various versions of this, and this final version is in Prismacolor on Bristol. Sometimes my crazy ideas of how to fix things actually leads me too far away from the thing that I'm trying to fix, uh, visually speaking anyway. And uh, so, but I really like how all of these turned out in their own way, except for the graphite one, that one. That one I don't like so much. But this one turned out really nicely. Uh, it kind of captures the whole, like, living habitat thing. It uh, it really gets at this... It, it is in the shape of this kind of lumbering, battering ram. And, uh, yeah. So, until next time... Farewell, my friends.